Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for September 15th, 2022, could on 12 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the fact that Tropical Storm Fiona has formed. What's next for this system and where could it be impacting? Let's go and find out. Jumping, strengthening, taking a weather across the tropical Atlantic this morning. We noticed that the Atlantic Basin is quiet except for two systems out there. We have Tropical Storm Fiona, which is this system right here in the central and western part of the Atlantic Basin. And then we have this other system to the south of the Cabo Verde Islands. This will be moving generally westward over the next several days, and this might find an area of favorability for this to go on to develop. We'll have to see if that remains the case as we progress through the next several days. We took a look at Tropical Storm Fiona today. We noticed that really the thing that jumps out to us is the fact that we have a very unorganized system. We noticed that the low level circulation is here and we noticed that all of the deep convection is here. So this indicates the presence of some pretty strong shear that is out of the west southwest here, forcing all of this convection off towards the eastern side of the circulation. And so the circulation remains devoid of most convection today, very exposed, you can see that here. And if we jump out to the uh, kind of the zoomed out satellite picture here, we notice that again, this is the low level circulation. It's already becoming very decoupled from that mid-level circulation at this point. Now there will be occasional bursts of convection that try to either A, relocate the center closer to the deeper convection or tug it a little bit back towards the south and east closer into that convection. So this will not be a, a devoid of convection around the center for all periods of time. But for most of this time, it will remain pretty devoid of convection. And this will be something to monitor as this approaches the Leeward Island chain. Now, if we look at the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center, we notice that again, right now, sustained winds are at 50 miles per hour, give or take. A recon plane will be in there to investigate the system later today. And then we'll be having the storm move westward for the next several days, but it will begin to slow down as it enters the Caribbean. You can notice that the Icons here are a lot more clustered, which means that we have a storm that is beginning to slow down as it nears Puerto Rico and uh, Hispaniola at this point. Now, tropical storm watches and warnings have been issued for portions of the island chain. Again, uh, we notice that especially up there in the uh, greater Antilles area, we have tropical storm watches and warnings. Additional watches and warnings are likely for Puerto Rico and Hispaniola later today. And again, this will be moving uh, officially. This has the storm taking more of that northwestern trajectory into the Bahamas around Tuesday morning. Around Monday into Tuesday, we will have the storm entering the Bahamas. However, it is entirely possible that we have other outcomes. We'll talk about those here in a minute. In terms of the impacts for portions of the island chain, Puerto Rico, etc., there's an uh, elevated to significant impact risk, especially on the greater Antilles here in the far northern island chain, uh, portions of the U.S. British Virgin Islands, uh, most of central and southern Puerto Rico, and portions of Hispaniola in the Dominican Republic. There is a elevated to significant risk of impacts, including the potential for wind and heavy rainfall. And that, eleva that uh, elevated risk does continue to portions of far western Cuba and portions of the Bahamas. And of course, these impact risks will change as the storm grows closer in time and confidence increases. The wind forecast here is a little bit more uncertain and we have a little bit more of a spread in the forecast guidance. So right now, the best shot is calling for sustained 45 to 50 mile per hour winds across the U.S. Br British Virgin Islands, across portions of the Greater Antilles, uh, Antigua, portions of um, also Puerto Rico, and Hispaniola, and portions of the Dominican Republic. These areas could see wind gusts as high as 50 miles per hour, very hesitant to increase the, ri the risk of any higher wind because there's a lot of uncertainty. The official forecast has this coming in a little bit stronger here, right around 60-ish miles per hour, 65, 70 miles per hour. Uh, this is a little too high in my opinion, and I'm very hesitant to go with anything higher than 50. Now, the reason for that, we'll take a look at how strong the system is going to get. Let's look at the HVAS. This is the uh, Hurricane Specific model. This is developed um, by the Hurricane Center and uh, NOAA. And uh, so this is an experimental product, but still nonetheless, it is interesting to look at. 
I think this is the more realistic scenario out of the H Wharf and H Mon uh, situations, but we can tell that we have this upper level trough here, and this is just inducing. We have a little bit of uh, southwest and westerly shear impacting the storm right now, and that's not likely to change for the next several days. This is going to likely remain the case. Now, eventually, as this approaches the greater Antilles here, the, the northern part of the Leeward Islands, we do notice that the storm does start to align itself under a more favorable upper level pattern where some intensification could occur. The problem is going to be just exactly how these troughs in here interact and is it going to be detrimental to our system. And for most of the forecast trajectory here on the HVAFs, it doesn't really intensify the storm much. We notice that we get down briefly to 992 north of Puerto Rico, and this continues westernly, kind of just skirting past the island there of Puerto Rico, and then also to, uh, Hispaniola. It keeps it to the north. That is a realistic possibility. It is not entirely impossible that that happens. Now, we compare this to what the h wharf is showing. The h wharf is showing a uh, intensifying what would likely be a Category 2 hurricane sometime by Tuesday, well to the north and east of the Bahamas at this point. However, this is kind of the outlier solution, and I'm not really likely to believe this at the moment. And you kind of notice that, again, the current satellite image is all you kind of need to know to, to tell you that this is likely not going to occur. It's possible, but it's an outlier. And then plus we have this uh, trough digging in across Florida right here, and that's likely to only increase vertical shear for some period of time. Now, the track forecast is a little bit more uncertain, and this all plays into intensity as well. If we look at the GFS forecast, this is a 0 060 run, looking at the 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere at 5,000 feet off the ground. Right here is Fiona, and we notice again this is being steered right now across westernly across this big ridge of high pressure to its north and west, or north and east rather, and that's basically steering our storm towards the west at this point. However, Again, the ridge begins to weaken and the GFS indicates that this could be a stronger system on approach to the Greater Antilles and Puerto Rico, which then subsequently carries the system further towards the north. And again, this is not necessarily the most likely situation because the GFS once again has this as a pretty strong hurricane, similar to the h wharf. And I just don't think given the current state that we're seeing the storm in, that this is going to be a feasible solution. It's possible, but I wouldn't call it a very likely outcome. Now the GFS ensembles, if you look at the 500 millibar height anomalies here, we're looking at, again, basically about 18,400 feet in the atmosphere, the steering pattern. We notice again, here's our big ridge of high pressure, steering our storm generally towards the west. And we notice that this is going to change over the next several days because we have a series of troughs that will be entering the North Atlantic here. And this just creates a big weakness in the ridge. Now there is still this ridge here, which keeps our storm kind of on that southerly trajectory for a while, that ridge really weakens. And again, we kind of end up with a possible range of outcomes here. We notice that there is a heat dome over here that is trying to expand and move towards the north and east here, as there's a huge monster trough developing off the screen uh, back over the western part of the US. And that's kicking this ridge eastward this could create a blocking pattern for our storm and potentially send it westward. That's exactly what happens on the operational forecast. It blocks it and moves it westward for some period of time, about 10 days from now. However, the European ensembles are a little bit more eh, not so buying the GFS solution. This is the 060 run of the European ensembles. And we notice that again, immediately we notice that the tightest cluster is south of Puerto Rico entering the far northeastern part of the Caribbean by the next 72 hours from now. And this would increase the risk for Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic and Hispaniola. And then eventually it keeps it so weak, in fact, uh, that most of the members uh, reemerge this kind of just riding uh, the coast of Cuba at this point. Most of the, the members here ride it very close to Cuba and start to emerge this into the Southwest Atlantic and the Bahamas within a few days. Of course, we notice that the stronger members get tugged further towards north and east as, again, these, these kind of members would feel the clustering or the weakness in that ridge and more effectively be pulled out to sea. But then if we notice what the 12Z run of the GFS is doing, we'll kind of see how this goes again. It is bringing the system a little bit more over the island of Puerto Rico at this time. It's a little bit weaker at this point, 
and is further south and west in the short term. And this is about four days from now. Uh, so this does increase that risk then for portions of Hispaniola and the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. Again, bottom line, additional tropical storm watches and warnings will likely be issued for portions of the island chains uh, later today. Again, a 50, 55, maybe 60 mile per hour tropical storm entering portions of the Leeward Islands is certainly possible, but the long-term intensity forecast is very uncertain and for interest downstream across portions of Cuba, even Jamaica for that matter, the Bahamas, and yes, even Florida do need to continue to monitor the progress of this system because this is an ever-evolving situation and lots of moving factors, lots of moving parts, and we're going to have track and intensity changes over the next couple of days for sure. All right, so that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll have an update on Fiona later this evening.